two of her practice in SN1, SN2, E1, or E2 reactions. So what if you're given this molecule? OH, and you add this in sulfuric acid in the presence of heat, all right? What will happen? Well, again, these are classic dehydration reaction. And again, I will repeat this. Anytime you see an alcohol in the presence of an acid, you will undergo E1. That's your classic E1 mechanism, which means that there will be a fast step and a slow step because your hydroxide needs protonation. So you could think of uh, sulfuric acid or H2SO4 as some sort of H plus solution, uh, H plus ions in solution. All right, so the first thing that occurs is protonation. All right, these two ox uh, electrons on the on OH comes. Take this hydrogen here, and you form this CH3. Uh, you get oxygen with two bonds plus one from the charge. Now these electrons will kick off on the oxygen, right? And then you form your leaving group. Now you have the CH3 with a plus one formal charge. Uh, this is on a tertiary carbon cation, so there's no need for rearrangement. So all that happens is water now. All right, comes in. All right, and act as a base. Take these hydrogens and kicks off. And these electrons kicks off to form your, your neutral alkene, which will look something like this. All right, and that would be your neutral alkene with a double bond here. All right. How about this one? If you react this uh, organic substrate with sodium sulfide, well, again, this will act as your nucleophile. Again, a secondary alkyl halide, but a very strong nucleophile. We know it's going to be a fast reaction because of the strong nucleophile, right? So it's going to be SN2 or E2. Now, again, as we said before, sodium, uh, this SH group doesn't, it's not a base. It doesn't undergo elimination at all. These are substitution uh, nucleophilic stuff. And so this is prime for SN2, not SN1, because again, these are considered reactions. We have a negatively charged nucleophile, which is ready to go. So it comes in, attack the carbon, expel the chlorine. Now remember, because it's SN2, we show inversion of stereochemistry. So in this case, our SH will be going away from us. All right, how about this one? So what if we add this organic substrate and we react it with methanol, what would happen? Well, kind of analyze the situation. When we have a, uh, a secondary alkyl halide and a very weak base. So we know this has to be a slow reaction, right? So it's gonna be SN1 or E1. Again, methanol is a weak base and so it will never really undergo elimination because it's weak. It's weak, it's just simply too weak to undergo elimination. So this is just prime for SN1, all right? And the first thing in the mechanism, bromine leaves, all right? Oh man, I messed this up. The bromine leaves and you get your carbon cation with that hydrogen there. Say you have a secondary carbon cation, all right? Now this is open for methanol to attack, all right? There's less steric hindrance. So it comes in, the oxygen comes in and bond, and you get something that looks like this. An O bonded to an H and a CH3 from a plus one charge. Then simply in the last step of the mechanism, now the molecule of methanol comes in now, act as a base, take these hydrogens off, these electrons kicks off on the oxygen to form your neutral product. 
which looks something like this. All right, and you get this ether here. How about this one? So what if you have this molecule and you react it with uh, tributoxide? What will happen? Well, again, remember, tributoxide is a very bulky base. And so this is your classic E2 reaction. This is something you got to remember. It's a classic E2 reaction. So it will happen all in one step. Now, it goes for the most accessible hydrogen. So you see that we have a CH3 here. So we have three hydrogens here. This is the most accessible hydrogen. This has a CH3 here, so it will probably not undergo, it will probably not go for this hydrogen because of the steric engines of this big CH3 group here. Um, uh, right? This CH3 group is on the end, it is open, right? So it will come in, take off one of these hydrogens, uh, take off one of these hydrogens, and then kicks off, uh, take off one of these hydrogen, and kicks off the chlorine. And you'll get your neutral product to be something that looks like this. You get an alkene that looks like this, right? So again, your Hoffman product. Just remember that. Uh, this is. Uh, mem just remember that. Uh, now, this is your Hoffman product. And this, actually, there should be three hours here. Takes off the hydrogen, um, form a double bond, and then the chlorine leaves. And the chlorine leaves. So these electrons kick off on the chlorine. So three hours for an E2 reaction. Uh, but remember, terbutoxide always gives you your, your least substituted alkene or your Hoffman product. All right. So what if you're given this molecule again? And you decide to add hydrochloric acid. Well, again, remember we said that uh, in the presence of an acid, an alcohol will undergo an E1 reaction, classic E1 dehydration reaction, where you're formally losing a water molecule to form an alkene. Uh, now we're going to make an addendum to this uh, to this case. This is only true for. Uh, secondary and tertiary alcohols. Primary alcohols will not undergo, uh, will, will not follow this rule. And we're gonna, I mean, we're gonna explore what we'll talk about in the next reaction. All right, so the first thing that happens is protonation. So take these hydrogen kicks off on the chlorine. All right now you get this, something that looks like this. Oxygen with two hydrogens plus one formal charge. Now these electrons can leave. Right now, your water leaves as a leaving group. Right, so you have this plus charge here. Secondary, you have this plus charge here on a secondary uh, uh, carbon cation. Right, so now water molecule that that just leaves, uh, and maybe we should. Uh, Maybe before we continue the mechanism, do you see that we have a secondary carbocation uh, and we could somehow get this to be a tertiary carbocation. So rearrangement, I'm not going to write it up, but you could do a one, two hydride shift where this hydrogen comes in, satisfy that, uh, that plus charge and you get your intermediate to look something like this. With a plus charge in here, All right? So now the water molecule that left come in act as a base maybe we should show these hydrogen here uh, act as a base take this hydrogen these electrons kicks in all right and you get your neutral alkene how about this one 
What if you added, what if you added this organic substrate? And you added a hydrobromic acid. What will happen? What will happen? This would be no reaction. And this is why I make a little addendum to a rules here. You never want to do E1 chemistry on a primary alcohol with acid, right? So remember we talked about, remember we said that, okay, if we had this, this is kind of a teaching lesson here, right? And we added HCl, we would get a reaction, right? We would get, we actually get an alkene. This is secondary. So when we form the carbocation, the carbocation intermediate looks something like this. Right, and then we could, sh and then remember we shifted, do a one to hydride shift, satisfy it, and the intermediate actually looks something like this. Well, we're able to plus charge on a tertiary alkyl halide. It turns out that this is very stable. Here, look what happens. Once water leaves, we get something that looks like this. We get a plus charge here with two hydrogens. This is very, very, and I can't stress enough, this is very, very unstable. Very, very unstable. And so what happens is that this reaction will actually never happen, right? So again, on secondary and tertiary alcohol in addition of acid, that's your classic E1 reaction, you will form an alkene. On a primary alcohol, this will actually, the reaction will never, the reaction will probably, the reaction will, ne will not occur. Right, so for this, so the product for this will be no reaction. And hopefully, you see the difference between these these two reactions here. So, what if we're given another molecule like this? And now we're showing steric chemistry. All right, and we decide to add sodium cyanide. Well, we know the cyanide is going to act as a nucleophile in this case. We have a secondary alkyl halide with a very strong nucleophile. So this is prime. This is going to be a fast reaction. Now it's going to be SN2 or E2. Well, again, cyanide anion, they're not bases. So we know that this will have to be SN2. Very fast reaction. So again, comes in, attack the carbon, expel the bromine. Now remember, SN2 shows inversion steric chemistry. So again, In this case, the bromine is coming out of us. The, the group that is, that, that is the leaving group that is coming out of us, the group that is attaching to the substrate is going to be going away. So you might have the cyanide looking something like this, and now your hydrogen. Your hydrogen will be coming out at you.